Hey, 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 it's me again. Just uh, relaxing a little bit, getting ready for bed. I was talking to my oldest son about some things that we were going over. Just different things in the past. And somehow we got to talking about Sophia Stewart. And in the year... Oh, it had to be late 1999 or early 2000, but it was hot, so it might have been 2000, very hot. The Matrix movie had already came out, and my son was dating, well, I don't say dating, he was hanging out with Sophia Stewart's niece. They both worked together at this camp for children on... Um, Oh, probably about 50 miles from Dallas, so maybe further than that. It was a pretty good piece, Minneola or something. But they worked together, and this particular day, it was a Saturday. My cousin and I and some more people were at my house playing dominoes and just drinking and relaxing. So my son comes with Yana and Sophia. And I don't know, I asked him why did they do this, but this day, what they did, they dropped Sophia off like she was a little child and wanted us to babysit her. And they, he said, we'll be right back. And I think they were gone for almost an hour. But Sophia, the you know, sometimes you go by first impressions and I usually get a good first impression, usually. Sometimes, you know, you just get it totally wrong. But Sophia, I knew something was wrong with this woman. She was either crazy, a genius, or wasn't taking her medication. Or drunk, let's get forward, or drunk, but I didn't smell any liquor. But they left... And this woman just kept touching me. We, I couldn't even play dominoes. I want you to listen to something. I got to tell you something. So I told her, let me finish my hand. And I got up and let somebody else play my spot partner and listen to her story. We went in the, in the um, bedroom. It was a little bitty house. I mean, the, ooh, the tiniest house you ever want to see. So you didn't have any privacy, but we went in the living room. No, the bedroom. And she was telling me her story, and she started crying. All she could say is, they stole my story. Kind of like this movie, exactly like the movie The Secret Garden. Where, um, can't think of the guy that played that movie. But anyway, it was exactly like that. She was crying and crying. And, and it made me cry. And I had seen the movie The Matrix, but it was hard to believe that she wrote this. And she was a mess, a total mess. And finally, my cousin came out uh, of the kitchen and tried to see what was going on and nobody could console her and a lot of people left. The people that were there left and it was just me and Sophia and finally my son and her niece came back and I, you know, everybody go through the things that they have to go through and where I'm my son and her niece went, I do not know, and I won't dare say, but I know I lived on a dead end street in this slap dab ghetto and trap houses all everywhere. So I don't know if they was doing a drug run. I don't know. Because when they came back, Sophia was happy or relieved or something. I don't know. It's like somebody needing some medication. Y'all hurry up and give it to her. But I, I kept in touch with Sophia, not knowing, you know, the depths of what she was trying to do. I, I really, I took it, took it very, very lightly. 
But the more I, I followed the internet and her story, I say, is it possible that she's re they really did this? The uh, what what Charsky brothers are. Uh, the more I, I look into their history, you know, they both did um, sex changes. They're women now, so you're dealing with some people that have some serious issues, but. Sophia had, had told me to get the book, her book, that the Matrix would copy it off of. So, it's called The Third Eye. I I bought the book. It might have been 2003 or two when I bought the book. But I was very, very disappointed. The book was nothing like the matrix i didn't see it the comparison and even though she said they the matrix was plagiarized and all of that i did not see it and i think it was maybe the book was very expensive maybe like 30 something dollars and when you get it it's only maybe maybe a hundred pages of actual storytelling and it, it to me it the book is like the Bible. I mean, because it it has this leader that's a savior that's supposed to save the world and I know she was using her savior in the book to um Neo that was in the Matrix. So that's where she gets that. But her her story was not complete. There's no way you can have a manuscript. I, I see where she get the hundred pages because when you make it a movie, each page is uh, symbolic of um, um, oh god, how it go? The, the movie running. I think one page is a minute. So she only had a hundred a hundred pages. She had a hundred minutes. So sixty Maybe that would be a two-hour movie, but it didn't make sense. It was nothing like The Matrix, and the rest of the book was full of lawsuit information, documents of people she was suing, and it, it just wasn't tangible. It wasn't enough proof to say that was The Matrix. I was just really disappointed in it, but... The stories that's on the internet about her winning this lawsuit is not true. She did not win that lawsuit. She didn't even show up for the last uh, hearing that they supposed to have. And I think she ended up having to pay lawyer fees and stuff like that. So, I don't know. I think I, I heard her talking on Ashira's channel last year and she sounds the same way she sound the story is the same but Sophia is kind of on the edge of genius and schizophrenia it's it's just such a thin line because you take she's she's a very smart woman but when she talks her, her story drifts and goes into something else. It's like, how did we get here? Because what you're talking about now doesn't have anything to do with the question. But Sophia takes the conversation so until you cannot interject anything. It's just, you might as well just shut up and enjoy the ride. But I... You know, in her mind, you know, if if you <laughs> if you submit your work to a publishing house or whatever, anybody else, because that's what she did, submitted to uh, the studio, her manuscript, and you, I've submitted, I've submitted many stories, and sometimes you get a rejection, and sometimes you don't, and then if 
you see something that's turned into a movie that you think is so similar to what you said, you will take it and run with it because there have been quotes that I have said and I'm thinking I'm the, um, I coined a new phrase, but it, it come when it comes out in a movie or something, I would just, oh man, they stole my story. They stole my line. So it's so easy to get caught up in there. So you have to do your copywriting and all of that. And, you know, they have it so when I was doing my copyrights at the, uh, with the government, you know, you have to pay for that and, um, uh, you will get it, but that doesn't mean that your idea can't be stolen because they can't take your word for word, but they can take your thought, your your idea, and turn it into something else. So it's it's kind of I don't know copyrights and patents. It's a I have copyrights, my stories, I even have a patent in the patent office, and I'm broke as, I mean, you just can't hardly rub two nickels together, so, but you do have high hopes when you patent something and copyright, and the copyright that I had on this uh, particular glove, this, this, uh, patents are high, $10,000, but my son was able to get some lawyers to do it for me real cheap at the college that he went to. But still, even with that patent, you, you are just so, what's the word, paranoid that somebody has stolen your patent. I would see stuff that looked like mine of a person had on a glove. Oh, they stole my, my patent. And so I can understand what Sophia was going through because it happens. And, you know, you have to do a maintenance on a patent every 10 years and that costs money too. So I didn't didn't do the maintenance on it. So I don't even know if, if the patent is still in my name. But a lot of people go back through patents that the maintenance haven't been paid on them and they take that patent and make millions off of it because it's just an idea that somebody has gotten a patent on it and it's just floating around so they could you can take it and do something with it but Sophia I I don't know her story she believed it. She really believed. That day I saw her and I I had no idea who she was. I just said, this is a broken woman that was just just torn apart. And you it reminds me of I never seen this before, but can you picture if somebody kidnapped your baby? And the police and nobody is helping you. She was begging for help. Help me. Help me. They stole my story. And it was nothing I could do but sit there, listen, and and cry. I tried not to break down, but it was it was really sad to see her like that. But the question is still in the air. Did did she really write it and I can only say, get the book. No, don't get the book, cause you'll be really mad. I and I'm I'm one that never. I don't throw books away. I take them to uh, Salvation Army or or this uh, this resale shop. But that book, I actually threw it away. I was so mad. I was just that mad. But if you really want to kind of thumb through it. I think you can kind of flip through it on Amazon, but maybe you could get uh, the ebooks. But no, I, I'm not convinced. But anyway, I, I've been thinking about making this video for years. Not for years, but 
since I opened my, started my channel, but it's been on my mind. And I've had conversations with people and 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 have made comments on different people's um, channels. And people, black people, will beat you up when you you go against Sophia's story. They, they told me I was lying. I had met her. My story is uh, you the one lying. It was like, oh, please, come on now. Why would I make a, a story about Sophia's story? It's, I met the woman, and she was a wreck, a total wreck. And I was really angry at my son and her niece for dropping her off like that. And I got a babysitter. Uh, she was ill. And maybe she needed some medication. I don't know. But surely she's stabilized now. But anyway, that's just my little take on Sophia. She's a, a genius, though. You, you, you can't take that away from this woman and her niece. I mean, just, oh, God, she's smart, too. But anyway, we're going to get out of here. Talk to you later. Bye.